So we thank God so much for being here. For those of y'all who met me for the first time, let me introduce myself. I am a sinner just like you. There's nothing in my background states that I should be up here preaching to you. But what's in my background is the same thing you should have in your rank and file. I am a sinner by grace. That does not make me a perfect man. That does not make me above any other man. But what it does make me, Jesus has forgiven me of my sins. And therefore, I can tell the world how good Jesus Christ is. So therefore, he allows me to preach his word to his people without conviction, knowing that I should be in that line on my way to hell. So I'm glad that I'm not on my way to hell. Those ain't clapping. I hope you ain't on your way to hell. You should be clapping right now. You're not on your way to hell. For God has really blessed us to be here to come today. No matter what the rain is, there's still sunshine after the rain. So we thank God so much. So thank you so much. And I, and I got to say this, boy, y'all got the best hospitality for a preacher I ever said. I got fruit back there. And I ate some of that bacon and all that. So I want y'all to know. That I did the chair. I just want y'all to know. Yeah, I just want to. I just want y'all to know that they take good care of me. Amen. Amen. Now I'm an old country boy. My mama's from Mississippi. My daddy's from Tennessee. They're going home to be home with the Lord. So one thing my mama always told me, son, whenever you get in the doors of the church or the church house, always praise God with your best. You never know when it might be your last time. So in honor of the men today, thank you men for inviting me to be able to speak uh, in your behalf because I am a man just like you are. And just like on Mother's Day, the man don't get to speak. And on Men's Day, the women should be able to speak. <laughs> Somebody will help me talk here. Because we know. Now, since I'm a country boy, I believe in using the whole sanctuary. Won't y'all stand to your feet? And let's get ready to get over to the word. And we're going to do this old country way of open up the church. Amen? All right. Now, some of y'all know this. Now, the people under 50 may not know this song, but you can catch on. So, you can do, if you can do the electric slide, you can catch on with a church song. Amen? All right. I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. Come on, say it one more time. I know it was, and I know it was the blood. Come on, let the Lord hear you. I know it was the blood, and I know it was the blood. For me, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. This is right. a hush, a hush. Somebody's calling my name, hush. Hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, shall I do? And this voice you left this morning. Yeah, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, Help me say it, y'all, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Yeah. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, every. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 everywhere I go, 
I'm gonna say let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it. All right, we're gonna close out right here, y'all go. Heaven is my goal. Each and every day, I got to keep on moving, moving the right way. Will you see if I stumble? Step aside, y'all, cause I don't want all way. All right, 30 seconds, hand clap praise. Think about what God has done for you. Think about how good he's been to your family. Think about how he has blessed you all these six days of the week and brought you to his house to tell the Lord, thank you, that God will make a way out of no way. And he made a way that we can come and be together and be with God. All right, here we go, y'all. Yeah. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Oh, so much trouble, y'all. I have to cry sometimes. I lay it awake at night. But that's all right. And I know Jesus. After a while. Come on, tell your neighbor. Trouble in my way, y'all. Whoa, so much trouble, y'all. I have to cry sometime. I lay it awake at night. But that's all right. And I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I know Jesus will. After a while. Amen. Amen. Those are your Bibles. Those of you who have your Bibles, turn to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Old Testament for those who don't go to Bible class. Amen. Ecclesiastes. The 12th chapter and the 13th and the 14th verse only I'll be reading for your hearing. Everybody have it? If you don't have it, say hold up preacher. I got time. I see we got Memphis in the house. Amen. Amen. I mean, well, Tennessee right on the way. He, he everywhere. Amen. 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 You know what? I always want to say just thank you for your service. Thank you. I know you heard that a lot, but I just want to do it personally myself. Amen. 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 You've been retired a long time. You probably said, what are you talking about? I didn't bring you a sandwich. Amen. Amen. But we thank God. Ecclesiastes 12 chapter in the 13th verse, uh, 13th verse and I'm going to read out the King James verse. It says, let us hear. Are y'all there? And you may say, read preacher. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment and with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. You may be seeing the presence of the Lord. Look at your neighbor. Find a good neighbor. Find a good neighbor. Hope you say good morning to him. Find a good neighbor. Find a good neighbor. Who you say good morning? Say, neighbor. The preacher gonna preach about. I am a man. Man. Find another neighbor if you can. Keep the same one you want to say, neighbor. Good to see you. If I go to sleep, you slap me. Oh, don't lose them. Don't lose them. Don't lose them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And if you go to sleep, I'll slap you. Don't lose them. Don't lose them. 
And if we both go to sleep, God slap us both. Amen. You see him go to sleep, slap him. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'll be done before the medication take in, amen. Should have took your medication after church, amen. Trust God to keep you living while you're in church, amen. Amen. So you see him sleeping, slap him. See somebody talking about something I ain't talking about, ignore him. Can I get a witness, somebody? I don't know why we always come here and we think about when we get in church, now all of a sudden our mind go blank for 15 minutes. But when we watch in Lifetime, we don't miss a beat. Somebody will help me talk here. But when we have the preacher gets up and talk, now your mind, oh, I got to do this tomorrow. I got to do this tomorrow. I got to do that. That's the trick of the devil. Can I get a witness, somebody? So the best way to enjoy the sermon is to listen to the sermon because it might just help you along the way. Amen? Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are here today to celebrate Men's Day. And one of the greatest occasions is that a man really honors when he knows where he comes from. Uh, you can find our story in Genesis, the second chapter, when God created us after he created the earth. Which had a Bible reading in the house. And, and, and he didn't create the best thing because we all know a little bit verse after that. He created the best thing that a man can have and that is a woman. So I can honestly say he saved the best for last. We understand here that our history our, uh, plays us because we understand that the world is now living different as how a man should be. Okay. Believe it or not, brothers and sisters, I don't care what you say, due to popular demand, the world has changed from what God had created of us. Can I get a witness, somebody? We understand here as being a man, we all look back as men as when we was growing up and some of us had some real good fathers. I come to testify that I was blessed with a good father. I was blessed with a father that went to work early in the morning, came home in the evening and made sure his family had everything they needed. I wish somebody was raised like me. And... He would not be discouraged. He would not be upset. But one thing I was glad about my father, he always taught me to never give excuses about being a man. A real man does not exercise or does not weigh his options on excuses. I don't know about you all, but the, the men we see that's growing up today, they always got excuses why they can't do something. It is very empowered today that men have to take back their stand in the world because we have now been bamboozled, hoodwinked, and run amok by social media. We have been taken out of the homes. We have been known as failures. And now because a woman makes more money than a man, then a man has no power. Well, let me encourage you men. No matter what, I learned this a long time ago, even in Sunday school when I was a little bitty boy. All the blessings that flow in your home comes through the man. I wish I had a Bible read in the house. When God called out Abraham to be the father of many nations, everything that went through him was blessed through Abraham. Can I get a witness, somebody? We understand here today that men day is so important because we have to understand men and women are not alike. I wish I had some help right here. I know most of y'all brought the Steve Harvey book, uh, Be Like We Think Like a Man. And that's a truly a, a book that's not giving you all the facts about a real man. Can I get a witness, somebody? Because first of all, a real man is very simple. Yeah, you, what you mean, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. The reason we're simple is because I've been married for 33 years. And I'm going, can I go and keep it real? It ain't nothing being a hand pecked as long as you peck by the right hand. Can I get a witness, somebody? Somebody will help me talk here. Makes my day easier when I know where the food at. Can I get a witness, somebody? Makes my day easier when he tells me what to put on. Can I get a witness, somebody? Makes my day easier, but maybe you may, no, 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 we need a little bit more money than that. Can I get a witness, somebody? So we understand here that men has a duty that is called out in our text today. Most of us can realize, and I, I really salute the men of the 50s and 60s because I say they were the, one of the strongest men of the era as we took our change as black men had opportunity in the world today. 
Believe it or not, without the sacrifice of my black elders, my black men, I would not be able to have the liberties that I have today. What is the liberties that you have? What I'm glad you asked. You know, it was good to be able to take my family out to the restaurant and they can sit where they want to sit. It was good to take my family to a place where we didn't have to use the back door to come in and stay at the hotel. It was good to take my children to Disneyland and Disney World on vacation. Somebody will help me talk here. It was good to take my wife to Jamaica and enjoy the sunset going up and coming down, ladies, if you know what I mean. It was good to be able to do the things and see my kids graduate from college and stuff. It, it was good that God allowed, but the men before me made that happen because of the discrimination and because of the rights that the white man didn't want us to have. I don't care what you're talking about now. only thing that's stopping us now is our own self men. We are stopping our own self. We're not part of lynchings. We're not part, but we are stopping ourselves because the Bible is telling us that men has a duty and we must stick to it. Well, believe it or not, let me use my Simeon education. The Bible talks about how God had made a way out of no way for us. In other words, let me go back. Some of you may remember the civil rights movement in Memphis, Tennessee in 1968. The black Memphis sanitation workers went on strike for union wages and better working conditions after two black men were killed in the back of the garbage truck. They picketed with signs that displayed, I am a man. And believe it or not, brothers and sisters, we must have take our stand back. And men, that's why I was so proud to see y'all up here singing. We are supposed to take our rightful place back as being the man in the home. Now, I'm not going to put it all on the man because some of you sisters give these brothers too much change to shop with. Can I go and keep it real? And let, me, let, me, let me break it down. Can I break it down for one pastor? Some of you young ladies let these men get away with murder. Can I get a witness, somebody? Because when I was growing up, if you didn't have no money, you ain't going to have no honey. Somebody will help me talk here. Can I get a witness, somebody? And do we let these men come in on these women? I know you got your jobs, you got your career, you got your college degree and everything, but you can't let a man sit on you while you do all the work. You're not supposed to go out and pay the mortgage and pay the bills and take the kids to school and change the car, do the taxes and put up the, the, the cut the grass and the, while he all sitting down playing Xbox and the NBA Live. Somebody will help me talk here. I hope y'all invite me back next year. But we understand here that God has told us that man has a duty that we must fulfill. I am a man. I am proud to be a man. It is so sad today that these men are going around dressing up like ladies. Yeah, I see it. Because it ain't right. The Bible says that we're not supposed to act like a lady or take anything in proportion of a lady. Social media tells us now that there's a gene out that every man has a feminine gene. I don't have a feminine gene. Somebody all talk back to me. I eat my sandwich with dirty hands. Can I get a witness, somebody? I like my milk in a dirty glass. Can I get a witness, somebody? We understand here that there is no such thing as a man. God does not make a mistake between a man and a woman. Can I get a witness, somebody? When he made Adam, he made Eve. He didn't make Steve. Can I get a witness, somebody? There's nothing in our DNA that a man can satisfy another man. Yeah, I see it. And the Bible says that women was created for man. And I don't care what no one said. The best thing it is, is a good woman beside a good man. They're taking over our school system by saying two dads and two moms. Well, I'm telling you, two dads and two moms don't work. Can I get a witness, somebody? Our TV shows are inflicted by how God has told us how to live as men and women. And we still let these TV shows take the preference. And some of us are so scared because we don't want to hurt our friends' feelings. And we don't want to hurt our family's feelings because our children have that lifestyle. Our family members have that lifestyle. Let me tell you something. God says it's wrong. they wrong. Just pray for them and keep on marching on. Can I get a witness, somebody? 
Here in our text today, Solomon gives us some advice on the duty of man while living on this earth. There are three ways to live as a man on this earth that God has commanded man to live on this earth. Walk with me through the text, how a man should live on this earth. First of all, Paul says in Acts 20, 24, a man is supposed to have joy being a man on this earth. And I don't know about you men, but I'm glad to be able to, uh, how can I say it, uh, can I go hood right quick? It's good to pay the cost to be the boss. I wish I had a couple of real men in the house that agree with me. See, you can't kick me out of my house because I'll pay the mortgage. Somebody will help me talk here. You can't tell me to sleep at somebody's house because I'll pay the light bill. Can I get a witness, somebody? I wish somebody help me talk it. I ain't scared. Now, those of y'all who lean on y'all woman, maybe I will help you out when you get home. You can bunker with somebody else. Amen. But I'm telling, come to tell you, a man has to pay the cost to be the boss. Can I be the witness? Somebody? I don't mind being broke as long as everything is paid for. I don't mind having no money in my pocket as long as my wife is looking good. I don't mind having no money in my pocket as long as she got gas in her car. And I definitely don't mind her having nothing in her pocket when she bringing groceries home to cook. Can I get a witness, somebody? Somebody will help me talk here. God has said we should be joyful being a man. It's almost now that it's almost a shame for you to be a man. And I know how you young ladies going through now. I know it's a struggle. I, I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard to find a good man. But you got to do what the Bible says. First, you got to make sure that you're in favor of getting a good man. I wish these ladies helped me talk right quick. Can I talk to the ladies right quick? The Bible says that you got to be in favor of being a wife. Walk in a wife way. So when God sees you that godly man, you ready to attach to that godly blessing. Somebody going to help me preach this. And then the Bible says, you ain't got to find him. He'll find you. Can I get a witness, somebody? I know CVS rattling now. Never thought these two would be together. But God is in the blessing business. Amen. So you have to be joyful. Paul says that in Acts. He says, but none of these things move me. Neither I count my life unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which have received the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Listen here, brothers. Let me tell you something. When we get home and when you walk in your house, you ought to thank God before you even walk in your house. Everything we own, everything we possess, everything we ever purchase, it all belongs to God. None of our families have been successful because of how we worked or how we planned their schedule or how our kids got. The only thing that made us successful was God's blessing. Because we dedicate our lives to God, men, God has a blessing over your household. You want your household blessed? Get closer to God. You want your household blessed? Just don't attend Sunday service. Come to the men's Bible class. You want to be blessed? Come to a workshop for men where men can come around and be men. I'm just so tired of these people today trying to imitate whether they are man or not. Either you're going to be a man or you ain't going to be a man. Talk, talk back to me, somebody. It is, so, it is so unfair, ladies, that y'all got these impersonators that can't even act. Y'all get that when you get home, amen. That one for RuPaul and the rest of them, amen. So when we look at here that God has told us to be a man, we should walk in our manly ways. It's no, you look, 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 men, don't be mad, don't be mad, don't be mad. You got on one blue sock and one green sock, don't be mad when she correct you. The Bible tells us that a woman knows what she likes from a man and a man knows like from a woman. Can I get a witness, somebody? So the Bible tells us that we are supposed to be joyful. Then next, man, we are supposed to be responsible. Peter tells us to be good stewards of God's blessing. It says that every man has uh, received a gift, even so men the same one to another as good stewards of manifold grace of God. My brothers and sisters, most of us look at the Bible of men in the Bible. But let me draw your attention to one man you probably skipped and never thought about it. Noah was a great man. Not because he built the ark. There are three things that happened with Noah that we never find out that we discussed in the Bible. First of all, Noah preached the same sermon for 120 years. He preached it's going to rain. 
He didn't have a subject. He didn't have three points. He didn't have a conclusion. He just told him it's going to rain. The second thing Noah did, he worked honestly for the Lord. What did Noah do? He built that ark. Yeah, look, y'all, he just didn't go to Home Depot and got all the stuff at one night. Somebody will talk back to me. Yeah. Noah worked on that ark. Can I get a witness, somebody? He did. He, he didn't have a crew. He didn't have a, He worked on that ark. So Noah was responsible. But one thing we forgot, the one thing, that Noah, even though he preached the same message 120 years, right? He built the ark, right? But this is the, the finale of it. Noah saved his family. We skipped that part. The church first eight converts when Noah saved his family. He preached 120 years and never got nobody to help him with that ark. But his family came to the fold and God saw grace on him. And so Noah was responsible for his family. And that's what happened with men today. We're not being responsible for our family. I, I know these young fathers, I don't mean to get on them, but look, can I go and keep it real? Can I go and keep it real? Buying him a pair of new Nikes ain't being a good father. Taking $25 out of his check a week don't make him a good father. And what is it? What is this called? How can you babysit your own kid? Somebody help me talk here. How do you babysit your own kid? That's your child. You watching your child. Oh, he's good. He come by, get him every weekend. Well, you got him six days a week. And then when you got something to do, he tell you he can't keep him. Well, don't worry. Your daddy going to be all right. He going to get you next week. Can I get a witness, somebody? Then you call up grandma. Grandma, what you doing? Come on. Then we want to go to grandma's house. The Bible tells us we have to be responsible as men. As long as we in the will of God, God will provide everything we need. Let me shout out to you young fathers. Those of y'all who doing it, I shout out to you. But one thing you got to do, it's not about gym shoes. It's not about them playing sports. It's not about them having an uh, Apple Watch. It's not about them having a Facebook. It's not about them having their own phone. What it's about is teaching your children how to be with God. I got some witnesses out here. I had time. My, my, my son brings his family to church every Sunday, and I, I cry every time I see him come to the door because he's 35 years old. He can go to any church he wants to. He's a grown man. But when I see him walking up with his wife and his three kids, I say, thank you, Lord. Somebody paid attention to daddy. Somebody did. Now, my daughter lives 3,000 miles away. She got away from the rules. Somebody help me talk here. She, she's the oldest. She's 36. They're 15 months apart. I can't tell what to do. But every time I go on the phone, she always say, Daddy, you ask me that same question. What church I go to? I say, I'm going to ask you that same question. You give me a church that you go to. Can I get a witness, somebody? Can I get a witness, somebody? Even though I know you've grown, but I still want to see you saved and covered by the blood of Jesus. Can I get a witness, somebody? I tell all the time, you're 3,000 miles away, baby girl. I can't get there to you, but I know somebody that can make it overnight. Can I get a witness, somebody? I want to make sure that she covered in the blood of Jesus. So the Bible tells us after we are being joyful, responsible, next we have to be wise as a man. I don't know about you all, but I, I, I learned a long time ago, and this before I even came, man. One time, you know, I grew up in Inglewood. Anybody in here grew up in the hood? All right, I grew up in East Inglewood, 6714 South Low. And, uh, and, and I'll never forget one time, me and my brother, we was uh, out on the, on the park bench sitting down. These five guys approached us. Now, my brother's a little bit bigger than me, but he, he's fearless, you know what I mean? He's a little bigger than uh, the average person. So my daddy always said, well, look, whenever you're with your brother, you're in charge now. And he always taught my brother to listen to what I said. So these five boys come up to us, and they said something about our mama called her black or whatever. Y'all know, you know, no mama jokes make you fight back then. Amen, somebody. Amen. So he loved his mama. Well, he say anything about his daddy, but his mama, he going to kill you. So these five guys approach us, and they start saying, if I saw I looked, I said, you know what? It's two of them and five of us. Now, I'm no fool. I know Bruce Lee beat up a lot of people on TV. But I know that's all stage and rehearse. Y'all with me? So I told my brother, look, we're going we gonna, to we, we gonna do it. We're we not going to stay and fight these boys. We're going to get out. He said, no, 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 Jim, we're going to fight. I said, look, man, when they come, we're going to make a break. You're going to run. We're going to run to the house. Y'all with me? 
Now I know most of you are saying, oh, you a little coward. No, no, I'm wise. <laughs> Type your neighbor say, the preacher's pretty wise. You know why? Because I'm going to fight another day. Tell back right to me, somebody. But I'm going to live today. So the whole plan was I'm going to catch one by one individually. Somebody will help me talk here. Come on. Some of y'all been thugs up in here. I'm going to catch them one by one. I'm going to get all, let them know I ain't scared of none of y'all, but I just can't fight all y'all together. Can I get a witness, somebody? So sometimes you got to run for your life and think about another day. Can I get a witness, somebody? So we thank God so much that God tells Solomon, says, it's best to come in from a man who asks God for wisdom. Solomon says, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man understanding shall attain wise counseling. See, this is why we have these elder men. I love talking to elder men because elder men are there where I'm trying to go. Can I get a witness, somebody? Men, remember we was young and we used to think that we'd be able to run forever. Okay, I see that that didn't go pretty well. Let me let me let me get my posse together. Remember when we had hair? Yeah, yeah. I know I got a posse now. Amen, amen. Love people to rock my hairstyle. Amen. Daddy said that son, one day your steps gonna get old, and one day you ain't gonna be able to do the things you used to do. So what you got to try to do is be the best of what you're gonna be can when you got the opportunity to do it. Can I get a with somebody? Martin Luther King words, they say you're going to be the sweet, uh, street sweeper, be the best street sweeper it can be. Can I get a witness, somebody? So we understand here is that men have to live wisely. And we have to live wisely now because our manhood is being put down by social media and the young people by saying what a real man is. So I come to tell you today, men, stay encouraged because you are real men in the Lord. You are men that have been blessed by the Lord to do the things God wants you to do. Can I get a witness, somebody? A man should live his life as a man, glorifying God and his character and Jesus and his personal Savior. Why? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says in Revelation 20, 20 22, Jesus is coming back again to reward every man according to his works. He has done here on earth in the name of Jesus. So we understand here that God, even God himself took the image of a man and put Jesus on the cross to die for our sins. What God has done, God has blessed us to be able to do the things we need to do because we as men understand that once a man, always a man. Can I get a witness, somebody? So we thank God so much for God giving us men on this earth. Can I get a witness, somebody? So we understand that it's a good thing to be a man this evening. Can I get a witness, someone? It's a good thing that my God has blessed us to be a man and not be confused of who we, what we're supposed to do. What is it Solomon said? Put on the whole duty of man. What is it about man? Man is supposed to protect our families. Man is supposed to look out for our wives. Men are supposed to look out for their children. Men are supposed to mentor other young men to let them know God is in the blessing business. Can I get a witness, somebody? Is there anybody here that want to help me close this right now? God has made a man in his own image. In other words, you ought to be proud if you're a man today. Can I get a witness? God has done a wonderful thing for create us as men and women. Now, don't be shy, women. It's okay to be a lady. You should be proud to be a woman. God made you for a special reason, for a special cause. Can I get a witness, somebody? Is anybody here that's glad this morning that God woke him up this morning? Thank you, Lord. For making me a man. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me to church this morning. Can I get a witness? God has done some wonderful things for me and you. What is it, preacher, that God has done for you? I want to thank the Lord for making me Felix Jr. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a good father. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a real man. Can I get a witness this morning? If God has blessed you to know a real man in your life, could you help me close this? Could you stand to your feet and give God some praise? Thank you, Lord. all you can be. Can I get witness now?
You glad this morning that God touched you with the finger of love? He woke us up this morning to celebrate, to say thank you, Lord, for my children. Is there any that want to make the devil mad right now? We're going to give God some praise. Throw your hands in the air and wave it like you just don't care. And tell God, thank you for being good to me. Thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you for all my trials and tribulations. Sometimes up, sometimes down. God always been around town. Is there anybody here that want to give God some praise? Why you got lungs in your mouth? Why you got hands to clap? Everybody ought to praise the Lord that got breath right now. Thank you, Lord, for being good to me. Thank you, Lord, for being good to us. And grab somebody, grab them by the hand, and encourage them a little bit. Tell them God is a good God. Come on, preach to them. God is a great God. Won't God do it? Can God do it? Will God do it? You ought to say, yeah. Say, yeah. Before I go, I want to let you know God has done a wonderful thing. Look at me. I had a stroke, y'all. In 2015, I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. I couldn't put my clothes on. My side was all gone. But look at God. Look what he done for me. God touched me in night hour. Won't God do it? Can God do it? Will God do it? Let me tell my story, and I'm going to get out your way. If you don't mind, can I tell it like I want to tell it? I got to put my hands on my hip, and I got to let my backbone slip. God is a healer today. Look at me now. I can shout for the glory. I can wave my hands. I can do my dance. Is there anybody here that know God is a healer? Is there anybody here that know God's a way maker? You ought to shout, yeah. Say, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I'm going to go to my seat now, but I really don't want to quit because I don't know if this is my last time. But before I go, I'm going to let you know I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. Is there anybody here that's on the battlefield? I promise him I was I die. Help me say it, y'all. God is a good God. God is a great God. Shake your neighbor's hand one more time. Tell them God is a good God. For we know that I am a man.